Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 138 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is one of those fish that I've always known about but haven't really dug too much research into. Um, not saying that there's not research out there. A lot of people are interested in, in this fish. And in fact, it's probably a fish that you of the audience probably already know. Today's fish that we're gonna be talking about is bam the Cravali Jack or Jack Cravali or the thousands of other common names that this fish has. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry about that. So the Jack Cravali or scientific name Caranx Karen Carinx Hippos. Again, Carinx. Hippos, sorry, I have a hard time saying that. It is part of the family Carangidae. Again, Carangidae, which is the family of Jacks, Jacks, Pompanos, and Scads. So it's a very, very large family. Um, now this fish is native to the coastlines of the Atlantic. So pretty much all the way down up from New England, all the way down. I say coastlines, but they can be much more farther out than that. They're not just found on the coastlines. Um, I should also mention they are found in the Mediterranean Sea as well. Um, Mediterranean does connect, but it's found along, especially along the coast of Africa. There's a lot of Jack Cravali all along the coast of Africa. Um, but like I said, they are found along the coastlines, but that's essentially because they're really found inside the coastal shelf waters. Um, coastal shelf, basically call it the super deep part of the ocean and then the not so super deep part of the ocean. I don't really know how to explain that. I'm not a, I'm not a geologist. Um, but so the continents are sitting on their continental shelves and in the deep, deep parts of the ocean, there's the, where those big drops are, drop offs are. Um, do a look at it. Um, that's all I can really suggest. You, you, we're gonna find these closer. These are not gonna be found super deep, way out in the open, but they can be found out in the open. Just closer than. Man, it's hard to describe this. I shouldn't have started. Um, Essentially, the larger they are found, the further out and the deeper they are found. Let's just put it that way. Um, when they're small, um, not when they're larval stage. When they're larval stage, they're just pelagic. They're really associated with floating debris. When they're, you know, super small, but they're still, you know, adults, that's when you find them really close to the coastline. Um, and then, then when they're in the coastline, they're found in all habitats, seagrass beds, lagoons, shallow reefs, things like that. Then when they're deep and out in the water, they really are associated with continental shelf edges and deep reefs. Um, like I said, that's where the continental shelf drops down. Um, and they can be found up to a depth of about 350 meters, you know, 1150 feet. They're very commonly associated, at least in the um, Americas, especially in the Gulf of Mexico, really commonly associated with oil rig platforms, um, which is a very popular fishing destination, um, as most of you may already know. Now, it is a migratory fish. Um, it will go to tropical waters during the winter. So all the fish that are found up in the northern and extreme southern I'm sorry, the baby kept me up like late last night. Um, decided sleep was for the week, and everyone should be awake. But um, super far north and super far no super far south fish will migrate up into those tropical waters and to escape um, hypothermic conditions. And it seems to be evidence that these fish are actually very subject to hypothermic conditions, um, which is really strange because most fish are not really subject subjected to cold um, waters like that but it's really really interesting 
Now it is a large fish. Um, you'll see here these are actually two smaller fish, but we have some. We have a picture of a large one. But if you go in there, you can see people fishing. Um, just massive, massive ones. Um, so it can get pretty large. In fact, it's the largest of the genus Cranks, which is a pretty big genus, if I remember correctly. Um, I believe it's a big genus, I'm not sure. Um, but it's a big family regardless. This is a very, very large fish. Um, well, a large fish for this genus. Um, its max length is about 125 centimeters, which is about four feet. Um, and the max weight is gonna be around 32 kilograms, 71 pounds. So it gets, it's short, but it gets really wide and thick. It is extremely muscular. Um, extremely, extremely muscular. Now it has this elongated, you can't really tell here, but you can tell that it's a kind of a compressed um, body shape, meaning compressed this way, elongated. Um, its jawline extends well past the eye. So this jaw comes well past the eye. Um, it's got this strongly forked caudal, uh, caudal, caudal fin. Um, very, very strong caudal. It's hard to tell, but I think you can tell it here. It's got a keel on the sides right at the caudal peduncle, which is super interesting, actually. Most of the time, your keels are associated with the top of the bottom on fish, but they're actually right here. And this is actually kind of interesting because it has a relatively unique lateral line. You see the lateral line right here going way up and then kind of flattening here. Well, on the second part of this uh, lateral line, that's where it actually has scoots instead of scales. Remember, scoots are those really, those bony plates that are associated with like sturgeon and stuff. Um, just a really, really interesting little tidbit of information. Um, otherwise, they got two dorsal fins. Um, one is spiny, the second one is has this one long spine with all these all the rest are soft um, it's got long pectoral fins it's got this it's got a fit a spine in each of the pelvic fins as well it's got this kind of sickle shaped anal fin as well almost directly opposite um, but I mean really and truly you're looking for a silvery ish fish Sometimes they can be colorful, like this one's pretty yellow. Um, black spot on this, a purple bone right there, and a black spot at the base of the pectoral fin. Um, those are, it's a pretty distinctive fish. Um, I hope you can't really confuse it too much. I mean, it's, it's very variable in color. Blue, bluish black, black, not blue, black, black, but very silver, yellowish, olive, green I mean it's got a lot of a lot of different color variations but those two spots are pretty much a dead giveaway combined with this very thin caudal peduncle fork tail um, the anal fin usually is colored on the very front um, so I hope you can get that um, a little interesting note about the jaw it actually has three rows of teeth in total not on each jaw it has two on the top and then one on the bottom and the jaw on the top actually has their front row as these really kind of strong abundant canine teeth um, really really strong teeth on the outer row and it's got that inner row then it's got the bottom row and that's in terms of what it eats um, they are highly highly predatory very very predatory they eat fishes at all stages of life pretty much um unless they're in their larval stage and in their larval stage they're kind of eating whatever they can eat including each other but when they get to essentially any sort of size 
they are heavily predatory. Um, and that's interesting because they're actually one of the most abundant large fish in the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, I should have shown this picture here. Here you see a different color pattern. That's a little bit bigger, um, but it, it's still got the two spots. You've got this highly sloping forehead and caudobanuncle, but they are actually highly schooling. Um, they are a schooling species and highly predatory fish are not really associated with the size of schools that these have. You know, you have some predatory fish that will school together, but not many do it in the numbers that these do. And it's been shown that they will take bait balls of fish and kind of push them to the surface to make a feeding frenzy um, just by themselves, which is a little bit interesting. Um, in terms of like percentage wise, you can bet that, um, or at least there was research that showed that 74 to 94% of a Crevalli Jack's diet is actually fish. So very predatory. Um, as they get larger, you know, larger and larger, the more solitary and they become. So they really are only doing this when they're younger, when they get larger, they kind of go off to the side, um, really go to those continental shelves, um, staying alone, staying away from schools. And it actually shows that they become much more opportunistic feeders when they become larger, which means that they're kind of eating anything they can get. They have extremely fast digestive uh, tracts, so they have to eat relatively constantly. When they get older, they just pretty much eat whatever they can get a hold of. Um, which is a little interesting tidbit. But now, for the interesting fact that we're going to end the video on, um, fishing. If you have heard of fishing, you've heard of Raleigh Jack, especially saltwater fishing. These fish are insanely popular. Um, insanely popular. But, did you know how popular they were? And I didn't, and the numbers on this blew my mind. This is a heavily commercially fished fish. Heavily commercially fished. Since 2000, between 1900 and 10,200 tons have been caught every year. So, tw since 2000, between 1900 and 10,200 tons. Prior to 2000, from I think the numbers that were saying 1950 to 2000, there were more, up to, at some points, 38,000 tons of fish being commercially fished. It just that sink in. 38,000 tons of this fish being commercially fished. And then, think about this. Even and this, the statistics do seem to back this up. Even with all of that commercial fishing happening, happening, it is still estimated that the recreational catching catch rate is higher than the commercial rate. So that means that more people are going out on like guided tours or solo and everything to catch this fish to fish and catch this fish more of them they're doing that than the commercial fishing to the point that the recreational catchers are bringing in more weight in the u.s and this is just around the u.s alone it is it has an annual catch of 400 to a thousand tons per year that's just for amateur catch rate in the united states that is not counting mexico that's not counting Yucatan. That's not counting Brazil. That's not counting any of those um, South American, South and Central American countries, which have high Raleigh Jack catch uh, boat charter deal. Then you have the Mediterranean. You know, in Trinidad, from Mediterranean Europe and Africa, in Trinidad, there are multiple multiple tournaments where the Crevalli Jack is the fish that you're going for. Like, 
it is the fish. It's, you know, you got bass tournaments, walleye tournaments, if you're in the U.S., fresh water. There are Cravalli Jack tournaments. So, multiple, multiple tournaments just in Trinidad. So, I don't know how this fish is doing so well. I really don't. If you have that much amount of fish being caught, they're just seeming to survive and thrive under the commercial fishing. I don't understand it. It absolutely blew my mind how the Cravalli Jack has been so heavily fished for 70, almost 75 years, just since that has been recorded. And the populations do not seem to have issues right now. Now they could be. I don't know if there's any research going on on Cravalli population numbers. I have to imagine that some effect is happening, but no one seems to be concerned as of right now, my knowledge. Just absolutely my But regardless, thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. Please leave that like, comment, and subscribe down below. I, I've loved reading all the comments. The channel is growing. It's just been an awesome experience. We are so close to that 150 mark where I got that special Fish Friday plan. Thank you guys so much again. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.